Gretzky, will he shoot? He does. He scores! It was a Canadian icon as big as, well, Wayne Gretzky. I've been, from day one, a BlackBerry user. And became a global brand everyone just had to have including the most powerful people in the White House. On screen. I can't find my black bear. And off. Research in Motion changed the way we communicate and introduced two new Canadian legends, joint CEOs Mike Lazaridis and Jim Balsillie. But technology kept evolving and Steve Jobs was on the hunt. This is one device and we are calling it iPhone. All of a sudden, BlackBerry appeared stuck in time. Do you ever look at it and go, what are we going to do if this isn't our primary business? Mm -hmm. No. no. <laughs> Soon, its market share collapsed. Uh, I still have a BlackBerry. <laughs> one guy has one. Owning one became uncool. Valsalee and Lazaridis have never opened up about how their dream fell apart and the personal betrayal they both felt until now. All that's revealed in a new book about the spectacular rise and fall of BlackBerry, called Losing the Signal. I sat down with its co-author, Jackie McNish, earlier this week in Toronto. Jackie, great book. Thank you so much, Wendy. Good to be here. So it's called Losing the Signal, the spectacular rise and fall of BlackBerry. They blew it? Yes, they blew it, but it's a much richer story than that. Um, the incredible thing for me and the thing that my colleague Sean, Sean Silkoff and I learned writing this book was just the pace of the smartphone race. Don't forget BlackBerry was introduced in 1999 and they brought us one bit of the internet, which is your email. And then along came the iPhone, which brought you a whole Mac inside a phone. And BlackBerry went from zero to $20 billion, back down to today, $3 billion in revenue in 10 years. There has never been such a fast technology race, not really since television was introduced in the 50s. So what happened? Can you boil it down? Is it <laughs> you, there was the two guys well, and I got there was the technology. <laughs> yes. Um, what happened is, you know, the classic innovators dilemma. You invent a product that everyone loves. They owned more than 50% of the market. We were all addicted to our Blackberries. It changed our lives, how we worked, how we communicated, and they enjoyed being on top of the hill for a brief period of time. This little company in Waterloo that started above a bagel store. And then you get the big Silicon Valley predators, Apple and Google, and later Samsung, the Korean handset maker, turning their lenses on this very profitable company and going after the market. Steve Jobs walked onto a stage in January 2007 and pointed his big guns at, at BlackBerry and said, we're going into the smartphone market. It's going to be bigger than computers. I mean, he was a visionary. He knew how big this market was going to be. And back in Waterloo, Mike Lazaridis and Jim Balsillie, the two co-CEOs, looked at this phone and said it will never work because mm -hmm. they had grown up in an environment where bandwidth was so limited, you had to be very efficient. They didn't about, get it. They no, saw the touch no, screen and didn't they, get it. It was more than they didn't get it. They didn't think the carriers would be able to carry the, the capacity and, and the, the traffic that the iPhone would, would generate. 